Psalms chapter 64 <clears throat> To the chief musician, a psalm of David Hear my voice, O God, in prayer, calling out to God In my prayer, preserving, uh, preserve my life from the fear of the enemy David got people chasing after him We've got people to chase after us And there's fear And you cry out to God you don't dwell on the fear, you put it in God's hand. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. And all th through the last days of Jesus, the last times of Jesus, they were out making counsels and trying to catch Jesus at his word. They were trying to get people who you know, would lie about him and all that. And there are counsels out there right now today. You know what? They're trying to get rid of the Christians. They're trying to get rid of the Bible. They're trying to... And you don't even know what's going on. And hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked is, let them not find me. Let me keep on doing what I'm doing. That's the case. I mean, if there are going to be people who, in, in the land trying to stop them from being on the street, maybe somebody in, in Daytona Beach is going to think, hey, let's try to stop them down there. Well, Lord, hide us from them so we can keep on doing what you want us to do. For the insurrection of the workers, from the insurrection of the workers and iniquity. Now, this is interesting because an insurrection, you can find in Mark 15, 71, a rising against civil or political authority. These people are going against the authority of the government to go after David. Now, whether David now is king in, in Israel or not, David is anointed king. And they're doing everything in their power illegally. Barabbas was charged with insurrection and murder. Who wet. Wet is to rub to sharpen as you would do with an axe, with a stone, or a file. Who wet their tongue like a sword. To sharpen their tongue. It'll hurt. You wait till the Lord Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent as his mouth is spoken as the word of God, the sword. You want to talk about sharp. Piercing and dividing of the joints and marrow, Hebrew says. They bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Wartime, battle, trying to kill you. Saul kept taking that spear and chasing David. This is no, uh, I think it's going to happen. I think I got a problem. No, there's problems. And they're active, and they're getting David, they're chasing him to kill him. Even bitter words. So the stupid saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. No, that's not Bible fact. Words can do more than, than swords. As I said, without Adolf Hitler, I keep using him. As far as I know, he never killed any Jews, but his words, how many did he kill? How many wives have been degraded? How many children have been uh, caused to shame by a man, by a father, by a husband, and a cruel, rude mouth? That they may shoot in secret at the perfect they don't even come up to you now remember we're in the old testament we're not this is not nuclear warfare this is not push button when you battle somebody you saw them face to face these people don't even they do it in secret so no one sees so you don't know big mouth is the subject 
We talked about that in Wednesday night in church with the big mouth. The perfect. Now, again, that's not 100%. That's somebody who, 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 who's trying to do what God wants them to do. You know, you can be perfect in the eyes of God if you confess your sins and put them under the blood and your heart is right, you're trying, and you, you may fail, you may do wrong, but God looks at you like, you know what, you're trying. We're in a day and age that people don't even try. And we're talking about words again, verse 3. Suddenly they do shoot at him and fear not. David Switch here, he's not talking about himself. He's talking about he knows somebody who's perfect trying to do right, or maybe he's changed the, the pronoun clause, the third person. They don't fear the people who have got the big mouths. No fear the, the, the little sticker goes in the window. And they don't realize in Matthew chapter 12, I believe, is Jesus says that every word that man speaks, he shall give an account thereof. You better fear. They encourage themselves in evil matter. They help each other out to do wrong. They lift each other up to keep doing wrong. They, they promote each other doing wrong. There are organizations and there, there are uh, schools and there are all kinds of groups out there for the wrong and they encourage each other to keep doing wrong. They commune of laying snares privily again. Privily. Secret. Unaware. Snares are traps. They have no backbone. They're cowards. And they say, who shall see them? Now this is the few versus the many. They don't realize the eyes of the Lord are upon them watching for evil or for good. And that's for saved or for lost. There are people out there who will submit a complaint to somebody, whoever could be the, 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 the authority, and they won't even sign their name to it. There are rumors that have been started in the church and you don't even know who started it. They search out iniquities. And like Pastor said with the internet, you can search out anybody. And you can dig up their past. Listen, America's doing that now with, with the NSA. And they're going to use it against us. You better not have any charges. Pastor spoke about when this church conference, they meet in this state and and it's remarkable how much pornography, video, or renting on the television comes out. Do you know the NSA knows who did that? And then you can imagine standing in the courtroom, and then they say, Well, Mr. Pastor such and such, are you a clean guy? Yeah, I'm clean. I'm of the Lord. All right, can you explain this hotel bill on such and such date? Uh, 35 of these videos you watch, and then name off the titles. You do have at home on your television program, you have a pornography channel, right? And we know that you watch at 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning that you watch that. We know that you click on Listen. We have a wireless connection in this house from this computer. Anybody can. Don't, don't think because you have a password the government can't break it. If you've got a cable television. Listen, if they can bring a movie to you, why can't they bring what's in your living room to them? Same thing for satellites. You are being watched, and it may be to your own doom. You better put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you better forsake the sin. 
You go into a, 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 a convenience store, a grocery store, and you slide your little debit card. Do you know they know exactly what you bought? Now they're going to have to this this uh no don't deny it uh, this medical thing to America's doing they're going to, you're, they're going to know what your doctor treats you for even if it's not real you walk in there and you have maybe I don't know what I'm just going to pick a word but let's say you have the symptoms that look like syphilis it may not be that's not what the government's going to do. They're going to search you out because they are your enemy. And don't tell me it's happened. I've heard well-known preachers tell me that, that a, a, a pastor has been called into a courtroom. And then in the courtroom, they brought up the bill. They brought up the thing, whatever it is, and it strikes you down. And they'll go all the way back as far as they can. You know, the presidents, I said, yes, can cover up their sins, but you Bible-believing Christian won't be able to cover up yours. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. You know what I call that right there? I call that the Internet, World Wide Web. They use Facebook correctly. Now, I'm not going to condemn Facebook like some preachers and all that do. I'm not going to condemn it. I think it can be used for good. I think it can be used as a ministry tool. I mean, you got preachers out there that condemn the, uh, Facebook, and they got their messages on the Internet. They got where we will live stream our, our message so you can stay home and listen. Oh, yeah, we got a little footnote there. You know, you're to be in church. Oh, social network. Listen, I use I use the Facebook. Yeah, I talk to old friends and stuff like that. I use it like a telephone, and I use it for the ministry. And as I'm sitting here studying my courses and all that, what I learn, I'll put on Facebook for others to see. And I put stuff out there for them to start thinking. I use it as a ministry tool and I use it for friends. Diligent search. You know, I would be on a shallow doubt would realize that there is a file somewhere in Washington, D.C. with my name on it for all the stuff I've said. I wouldn't be surprised if they got all the videos. Well, when I look on YouTube and look at sermon there, I don't see anybody watching. Yeah, the government can change it so it don't look like you're, they're watching. They may be live broadcasting right now and put it into a file. I'll tell you one thing about the government of the United States. It ain't as stupid as you think it is. You can say, yes, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a conspiracist, but you know what? The government's had much, much money to use and do things. And you think they're going to tell you what they're doing? I could be wrong. Both the inward through thought, both the inward thought. Inward thought? You mean you know what you're thinking? Of every one of them. And the heart is deep. You better be careful. We are on the super highway of the internet today. and You know, you can Google someone's name. And you can get some information. And I've seen for some people, you know, if I pay this amount of money, I can get their address. I can get this and that. Uh, I can go and pay for something. I can get their, their lineage, their heritage, and their family and all that. But you know the government has a lot more information that they can get on that Internet that no common person can get. They know everything that you are hiding from your spouse. They know everything you are hiding from your, your parents. They know everything you are hiding from the pastor, and they know everything the pastor is hiding from the congregation. I'm going to tell you what it is again. It's that internet. It's that cable TV. It's the satellite TV. They got drones flying around now watching us. 
They got cameras all over the place. They can record if, if you run a stop sign or stoplight, excuse me. When we were at one time, we had to go to the Daytona Police Department. I had to go there a couple times, matter of fact. No, I think it was, I think it was the same. We went there a couple times. But I've been at the Daytona Police Department a couple times for whatever reasons it was. And if you look beyond the glass thing, you can see that there must have been like 25 monitors of intersections. And you see the cars going through. They monitor when you go into a bank. You're being watched in a convenience store. You're being watched when you do an ATM tr transaction. If they got employers today, I remember one of my employees, you slide a car through and it punches you, punches it up. That, that, that goes somewhere. We know how tardy you are in church. We know, I mean, church uh, at work, and we know how early you leave at work. Digital and data and computers has given the government the power that Satan will use. I'm telling you. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Now, this is not the arrow of, of, their, of their tongue, like we read in verses 3 and 4. No, this is God actually. Isn't it amazing that we learned that God shoots arrows? Where would you where would you get something like that from? Let's see. God is love, yeah. And a little guy going around shooting arrows of love. Oh, yeah, there we go. There it is. Cupid is God. He is a god, you know, small g. And he shoots arrows. Problem is when God shoots an arrow, you're going to feel it and it's not oh. It's going to be ow. Oh! Suddenly shall they be wounded, unlike that little guy that flies around around February 14th. He need to get a big cane and raid and spray that guy. Get him enough so he's choking on the ground and put handcuffs on him and get him for murder because when you shoot somebody in the heart with an arrow, he, they're dead. That's murder. God will wound them. For their talk. Don't you don't you care? Oh, I got this Christian, or I got this person talking about me, persecuting me. Listen, when Jesus met Paul on the road, he said, Why persecutest thou me? Paul didn't persecute Jesus, he persecuted Christians. God takes it personal. And if they speak against you, they speak against God, and then let God take care of it. Walk away. And there are some people in my life past, and I've looked and I was like, gee, I wonder if it's because of what they said or what they did to me. And I never prayed for that. I took my prayer book out this morning, and I prayed. For, and there, there, there are people in that book that they had done me wrong. I prayed for them. And I looked at that name, and there's so many names that just, wow, I forgot all about them. And I wanted to look at their life today. It's like, I wonder. But God will wound them with his arrow if they keep opening up their, their big mouth. There's somebody I know who had a big mouth as a Christian. And her last final dying day, she couldn't open up her mouth at all to talk. I know a Christian. I never missed church the day of my life. And God gave him a stroke. And then from that point on, missed a lot of church. And there are going to be people out there who hear this video, you know exactly who I'm talking about, and I don't care. It's the truth. Better watch what you say. Especially about others, and I wish I could 
put on last night's uh, church service what we had about the things that Christians do that are wrong that needs to be put in there is about the big mouth. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. The golden rule. Do unto others as others do unto you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. You let God take care of it. And God will give them. How many fruits do you get from one seed? You put a piece of corn in the ground. How much corn do you get back? And I'm not talking about the ears. I'm talking about the little individual pieces of corn on the cob. You need to realize that, Christian. When you plant that seed in the ground and, and that plant comes up, you're going to have a lot more than what you planted coming back to your life. Now, God may be merciful and gracious. Maybe he'll cut back some things. But the rule of nature, you will reap what you put in that ground, what you sow. And you ain't going to put poison ivy in the ground and then get cantaloupe. That don't work. I've never seen anybody plant a crab apple tree and then get oranges. Either the tree is good and its fruit is good, or the tree is evil and the fruit is evil, says Jesus. You can't walk both sides of the road. You cannot be a lukewarm Christian. Makes God sick. All that see them shall flee away. There are going to be people who are going to look at somebody who's in God's sight for what they've done, what they've said, and they're going to get away from me. Ooh, man, you are. Listen, I'm, look at the, the life of Job. Now, I'm not saying this is Job. But you realize out of Job's entire book, only four friends were with him when he had his plague? Somebody, hey, something wrong with Job. Keep away from him. Job, don't you come over here. No, 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 no. You you lost a house in a whirlwind. I want to keep mine. Get away from me, Job. And all men shall fear when they see what God does to them. When a gossip in a church, something happens to your life. Oh, wasn't that so rotten? No. God used it to tell you, you better not do it. <coughs> when God passes a judgment upon a Christian that sins in the church, you are to look and say, I ought not to do that. You know what capital punishment in God's eye in the Bible means? It means two things. First of all, the person's never going to do it again. Guarantee 100%. I can guarantee that. Number two, you are to look at that situation and you take the case of a Aiken. Oh, if God says don't take it, I better keep my hands off it. You are to learn from the capital punishments in the Bible. You are to learn when God says if a man eats blood, you ought not to eat blood. You will be, you will burn in hell. You are to be put to death. And yet today in 2014, on this side of the cross, A.D., in the land of Christ, the time of Jesus Christ, you got a church that says, be fivefold from, this is the blood of a man. Where the Bible says, before the law, during the law, and after the law, you're not to have blood. You know, if God would have done uh, 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 Acts chapter 5, the, the, the husband and wife did, dropped them dead for lying. If, if God would have done that to the church today, you realize how much the church would not obey? <laughs> I said not obey. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. That is not happening today. 
You got people out there marching saying that a murderer should be kept alive. You got people marching out there saying babies should be killed. You got people marching out there get these these religious fanatics off our sidewalk, which is public. You got people out there who don't want God. You got churches out there who don't want God. You don't believe me? I'll give you, uh, you email me. I've got a website that my wife and I watch every night, and I'll show you some of the things they've got that they don't want God. They don't want his work. They don't want his word. They don't want anything to do with him. We are in a generation today in a time that evil is good and good is evil. We are an opposite of Psalm 64. For they shall wisely consider of his, God's doing. You know what happens? Pastor gets a phone call in the church. Hey, I hear that these two couples are, you know, marriage bed. And they're not married. Pastor goes, investigates it, confronts them. You know what they do? They leave and go to another church. They go tell that pastor that church, hey, you know, we're, we're shacking up. We're common law marriage. This is going to hit somebody else in my family. We're common law marriage. Welcome into a church. All are welcome here. What did God say about that? What did God say about fornication? The Corinthian church had a guy sleeping with his father's wife. Oh, isn't that just so great? Paul's like, you morons, and that's my version. There was no fear in the Corinthian church. When we read the Bible, we are to fear our sins and see what God... This, oh, you can't find anywhere in the New Testament about sodomites. Yes, you can, Romans chapter 1. But when you read the Old Testament and you see what God says about the sodomite, that's an abomination. That tells you how much God thinks about it. Well, what, what's God think about these movies and, and stuff about witchcraft? Read the Old Testament. See what God says to do with it. You can't find tattoos and, and all that and, and printed marks. and, and you can, That's in the Old Testament. Yeah, but do you see what God says about it? That's all Old Testament. Yeah, that's an excuse. Paul quoted nine of the commandments of the ten. You are, why am I to read the Old Testament? You are to see the severity of sin. Listen, Paul says the law was a schoolmaster. Now, you're not to go out there and build something around your roof, a battlement. But when God says in the Bible that, hey, when you've got this affliction in your body, you need to go wash your hands according to the law. The dumb Americans in the Civil War didn't know about that. They would have a bucket of water and four or five surgeons would be keep washing their hands in that same bucket all day long and wonder why gangrene and pregnancy still birth was happening. You're going to do what God says. God knows. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. I see the righteous. Well, I'm not going to say right. The righteous is those who love the Lord and do what he tells them to do. And be glad. The other ones are just counterfeits. Backsliders. They're glad at the wrong things. That's what I was trying to say. You know, you're righteous. You do what you're supposed to do. You'll be happy. You'll have joy. Even amongst troubles and problems. And shall trust in him, God. And all the upright in heart shall glory. You do right. You try your best. You put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You seek God's help. You rely on God. And you will have a life pleasing to God. And that's just plain and simple. I didn't say a life without uh, suffering and all that. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. But your life inside you 
when all around you is in turmoil and you're in Christ. That's a glory. I've been there. I've, I've witnessed that. And people see it. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God.